Raskila Bahatara Basku Toro Bahasanta. Praise the mighty name of the Lord God Jehovah, the one who reigns forever and evermore. He is our great and mighty God, and there is none that can compare with him. I honor the Lord for this this glorious day, this marvelous day. Because I understand that great things are in store for those of you that love the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you this morning, this word out of his fiery presence. Because he wants you to understand a few things as it relates to commanding your day, commanding your life. It's And I'm using day and your time and life uh, synonymous to each other because that's what you have to see every single day as a day of importance, a day of value, a day of appreciation, a day of celebration, a day of preparation. Praise God. You have to see that uh, that day as a day of demonstration and manifestation. What is all of this culminating your divine destiny? And the Lord is saying that many people, many of you, you stumble and you end up um, not fulfilled and you end up not not finding your rightful blessings because you have or your destiny as I would call it are simply because you have not taken retrospect of where you are who you are and what you should be doing with every single moment of your day I want to read a scripture for you from the book of John chapter number 12 and I want to drop chapter number 11, sorry, where Jesus is now um, preparing to go and bear, go to the burial site of his dear friend Lazarus. And of course, they told him he got word um, from his sisters, Mary and Martha, that he had died. He was sick and then he died. And uh, the Bible said that when Jesus heard it, praise God, he said, the sickness was not unto death. But for the glory of God, the Father, and so that God might be glorified. But yet still, Lazarus died um, in, in, in the natural realm. Lazarus would have died. And oftentimes, the reason why I'm sharing this is because uh, even as prophets, when we release a word to people, and they say, well, I thought you said, and I thought God said, and I thought, and why is this still happening, and why the next still happen? But I want to show you that Jesus never lies. God never lies. His prophets never lies. He always says exactly what he wants to say because God does not, the, 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 the supernatural realm is not predicated on the natural realm. The supernatural realm, or what we would call the realm of the spirit, is never based on what we see happening in the natural realm. And that's where a lot of people go wrong because they walk by sight and they do not walk by faith. And Jesus now in the book of John chapter 11, he tells his disciples, my good friend Lazarus just died and um, I want to make preparations to go in and see him. And, and of course, you know the story, Jesus took uh, a few days before getting there, uh, three or four days and everyone was concerned because they said, where are you going? Surely by now this brother is stinketh. And that was the term they use. In other words, and they were saying in their tongue, he is rotten. He is really, really dead now. And Jesus was like, Yeah, we're going to go and wake him. The disciples said, Well, if we only if he's only sleeping, then he, he's doing good. But you know, in their back of their mind, they was having doubt. Because they knew that the brother had died and had already been buried. And I want to also believe that because now when you die in that culture, they don't keep your body, you know, in a morgue. They don't keep you there for couples, you know, for several days and weeks. There is, they try to bury you right away. And so the tomb is closed. Lazarus is dead. But this is what I want to get to for you today, beloved. Please hear the word of the Lord. From the mouth of the spirit of God that's speaking to you today. Jesus said these words. Now, the disciples were trying to discourage him. They said, the last time you've been up in that city, they tried to stone you. And you're going back again. Jesus said in verse 9, John 11 and 9. Are there not 12 hours in a day? If a man walks in the day, okay, 
Are there not 12 hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he does not stumble. Because why? He see the light of the world. He see the what? He see the light of the world. So if he walks in the day, he see it the light of the world. In other words, you're not going to fall as long as you're walking in the day. This is what Jesus is telling them. And then now he says in verse number 10, but if any man walk in the night, what? He will stumble because there is no light in him. There is no what? There is no light in him. If any man walks in the night, you will stumble because there is no light in you. And the reason why Jesus, uh, <laughs> The reason why Jesus is telling them this is because, and I want to give you this word from the Lord. Many people are walking and saying that they are walking with Jesus Christ, but yet they're stumbling. You're falling into the same mistakes. You're making the same, you're committing the same sin, or you're doing the same repetitive cycle all over and over again. And Jesus is now saying, you've got to now take retrospect and ask why you keep going through the same cycle is it that you're walking in the day or walking in the night now i want to submit to you that jesus was not talking about a time of day in as much as he was talking about a spiritual position it had nothing to do with day or night he said, if you walk in the day, you won't stumble. But if you walk in the light, you will stumble. What was Jesus talking about? He said, are there not 12 hours in a day? What was he talking about? He was talking about a spiritual realm, a place of existing in the spirit that would have kept you, praise God, seeing and hearing and functioning as God. If you walk in the day where there's light, you will summon. Let me give you one more scripture. Matthew 6 and 22 says this. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body will be full of light. The lamp of the body is the eye. What is Jesus talking about still? I'm coming. He's talking about you being in a spiritual position to discern to see God, to hear God. The light, he said the light of the body is the eye. You are able to see beyond that which is natural, that which is in front of you. See, you are Christian, but you're worrying too much. How are your bills going to be paid? How are you going to do this? How am I going to do that? I mean, people mine is already in September, back to school, and they haven't even gone through summer yet. How you get what I'm saying? That's because you are a night walker. You are what? A night walker. Only demons, the demonic is what likes to dominate the night. And though, But we as Christians who are prophets, we're not afraid to dominate it either. Because we have the light in us. So what Jesus was trying to tell us, this death is darkness. Death is darkness, but if we show up, we'll be light. When we get to the tomb where Lazarus is, light is going to show up. Lightning power from God is going to raise him from the dead. And he will no longer be in darkness in the tomb. So the light of the body, you, the light of the body is the eye. That's why seeing in the spirit, hearing and seeing in the spirit is so important. And a lot of times people will ask as a prophet, well, oh my God, how did you know that? Because we walk in the light. We walk as light and we walk in the light. We walk as day. There is no separation for us. There is no nighttime in the life of the believer. Oh God. There is no nighttime. There's no darkness. He said, that's why. When he, well, uh, in me, he said, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. A city set up on a hill will never be hid. In me, there is no darkness. In Jesus Christ, there is no what? No darkness. So, in other words, what was he saying? That when you now, what you now do is you bring yourself to a spiritual realm, praise God, of existing. And I want to say, I want to use the word coexisting 
because you begin to elevate to the place where now the more you seek the face of God the more you seek the character of Jesus Christ you become more like him <clears throat> praise God you become what more like him and the more you become like Christ everywhere you show up there is what we will call spiritual illumination you become illumined illumined a karande de boshaya you become what illumined an illumination a light a bright star shining into every dark situation that's why the bride must quickly be transformed that's why the bride must quickly renew the mind so that it can be transformed so that every arena we show up in whether it's music whether it's no matter which mountain of god we stand on we stand on that mountain strong whether it's a praise god media we stand our presence is there and they know we are there i am askotoya whether it's 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 a publication praise god a, a, a publication a book or whatever they know we are there because our book amen is now shaking the arena praise god we become available we become visible we become praise god amen to the where we are seen and we are heard that's why i'm saying the greatest gift hashalabanda na boshkiri hindi is the seeing prophet because now we we are seeing jesus said this now we see through a glass it was paul that wrote it he said we see through a glass dimly but amen when that which is in part is done away with then that which is perfect has come that which is in part shall be done away with and we no longer see dimly or darkly through a glass but we see clear we begin to see jesus we begin to see as jesus sees and that's what i'm speaking to today beloved as a prophet one of the powers and one of the praise god one of the uh, therefore praise god the the whole the soul so you begin to see things in a powerful way you begin to see things through the eyes of faith you begin to see things praise god as jesus sees it he was trying to tell the disciples i know the mortician said lazarus is dead but in my world where i dwell in the day lazarus is not dead lazarus is alive let's go and wake him even if he is dead in the natural in the spirit he is going to be awakened and that was the awakening that Jesus was talking about when Jesus when we show up when we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another who is the one another with the father son and holy ghost so you now as a believer you now as a child of god your 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 spiritual perspective has got to change and you have to stop walking in doubt and in fear and in unbelief you have to stop walking in the in the praise god in the darkness you have to now become visible your visibility has to become high in the spirit you got to see sharp you got a hair shop you have to know with confidence i know that god has called me i know that god has given me this assignment to do what i'm doing in his kingdom and you get to step in doing it you don't get caught up with the darkness you out the darkness that's what we've been been teaching when somebody have a problem with your kingdom you don't stand there entertaining it you out as you shut it down you light light is powerful light is one of the most powerful forces in the earth Light is so powerful that anywhere any room there's darkness you flip a switch and you out or eradicate the darkness. I don't care what city is in darkness. You flip a switch and then light comes on the darkness is no more. He hides. He disappears. He vanishes. And that's what the spirit of the Lord is saying to everyone today. You've got to now come after the light. Come after God that every day be a day where you're seeking God and honoring God with your life. Everything in this world will fade away only his word will stand forever the light is what's going to take you to your destiny the light of god the light following the light following jesus christ your eye being single he said if your eye be single matthew 6 and 22 your whole body will be full of light illumination the illumined one that one that is moving in power precision and accuracy why because now you are connected to the light and the light is connected to you 
and you are part of the light and the light is a part of you. There's no separation. But if you don't, he said, if you walk in the day, you won't stumble because the light is in you. But if you walk in the night, he's talking about a, a spiritual state of existence. And you ain't got no light. Listen to what he's saying. If you're walking in the night, he ain't telling you no walk in the night. You know, he's saying, if you're walking in the night, at least have your light on. If you're driving in the night, have your light on. Because if you don't, you're going to buck up. You're going to stumble. But if you are now a light carrier, whether it's day or night, whether somebody is dead or alive, whether somebody is sick, or you're going to show up. And you're going to perfect change in that situation. And so that's the word of the Lord today. The Lord is saying, walk in the light. Be a light. Be an example to the believers and unbelievers. Be, a, be, a, be an example to everyone, everywhere you go. Lift up the name of Jesus. Declare his goodness and his glory in the earth. Praise God. We have seen the great light. We have seen the great light. God, the light of God is shining forth now. Rishkalayente. Rakanara more than ever before. And then there are, I want to talk another time about those who are carriers of the light and then those who are keepers of the light. There are those of us that are apostles and prophets, many of us that God has raised up and is raising up in this hour. We are what we will call the, the, the embodiment of the light. We are the embodiment of the light. So I, I don't even need to share. I just show up. And I affect change, the dynamics and atmospheres, climates. I affect change in an environment. Why? Because now I am the embodiment of Jesus Christ. And I am seated in Christ in heavenly places. I'm with him. I'm inside of him. And he's inside of me. So now, this speaks to the abiding presence of the Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory, the life that I live, I live by faith. I live by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is the hope of glory. That is the hope of glory. So I become what? The embodiment. I become the essence. We, we become as the apostles and the prophets. We become the literal embodiment of who Jesus is. Who God is. And then we become carriers of that light. So everywhere we go, we are keepers of the flame. We are, sorry, carriers of the flame. We bring light in darkness. We, we heal the sick. We heal the lame. We heal, heal the, uh, raise the dead. We, 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 we praise God, deliver. We cast out demons. We are now the embodiment of Jesus Christ. That's why when I show up to any tomb, whatever, whoever is locked on the inside of that tomb, I say, who are you in Jesus name? And I say, come out. I am a, I do what? my Jesus did. He calls Lazarus out of dead places. Now, there, there are those of you who are what you will call keepers of the flame or keepers of the light. In the book of Leviticus, it talks about how the Levites, the priests, all of these uh, people that were anointed by God were the keepers of the flame, keepers of the light. There are some of you that are called, beloved, to make sure Praise God that you, you keep the flame lit in the light of your apostles, your prophets, or those you're called to serve. How do you do that? By taking the weight off of them. By making sure that what needs to be done in the house of the, God, of the Lord, like the Levites in the Old Testament, it's done. So that the apostle, the prophet, or the set leader, praise God, of that house does not have to come out from where they are to deal with small matters or to deal with matters. But you're there as a keeper of the flame. You're keeping the oil and the spices in the house of the Lord and the lamb's lit. Praise God. Then there are those that are called the protectors of the, of the light, the protectors of the flame. Praise God. There are those of you that have been called by God with, with humility but yet boldness. Praise God to make sure that none of the fiery darts of the wicked will penetrate and infiltrate Praise God, the life of the light that is God has sent in your life. Remember now, if the light goes out, praise God. You know, the word of God talks about how air, the lamp of Israel had gone out. When did that happen? Praise God. When did that happen in the book of Samuel? Praise God. When the people did not keep the temple, when they did not keep the flame, they did not protect Eli. In fact, many of them went to battle and they went to do what their own business consisted of. But they left Eli, the priest, sitting there 
out on a stool by himself. And the Bible said that then the Philistines came and they stole the ark. They stole this and they stole that and they rented the, the church and they did all form of abominable things, praise God. Even the sons of Eli began to commit uh, fornication and, and, and idolatry uh, in the door of the temple. And the Bible said hey, the lamp of God had gone out. Whenever the lamp of God goes out in the house of God, then we have a problem. Now that's why there should be people who are called what? The protectors of the light. The protectors. So there's the embodiment of the light or the lamp of God, which are the apostles, the prophets, those of us that are called by God to carry and then we will give a subcategory, which is also the carriers of the light. We are the ones that are the embodiment and the carriers. Then that there are those that are the keepers, those that make sure that everything is in place to make sure that that light stays lit in the house of God, which is the apostle, the prophet. Praise God, those that are called to be the shepherds. Then there's the protectors, those of you that make sure that, wait a minute, I'm here to protect. I'm here to, amen, to cover. I'm here to make sure sure that no contrary wind blows, no erroneous lies and foolishness blows, praise God, to, to cause the lamp to come out, to cause your leadership to become frustrated and to cause, praise God, people to, to try to penetrate and, and, and tear down the light that God has set in this temple. Praise God. Amen. And so I can go on and on and on. There's so many aspects of the light. But he says, now we are the light. Amen. That means you are part of this. Amen. When you add fire to fire, you should get a bigger fire. Amen. And when that's why we say fire upon fire. We get a bigger fire. We blaze the devil right out of the way. I don't care whatever he sent. His fiery darts of the wicked. Well, we come together and we send back an explosive, a dynamite fire that will blow him to pieces. Praise God. So let's remember today, beloved. Amen. That praise God. Amen. That God is calling us to walk in the day. To walk where? In the day. Walk in the light. Amen. Walk in the revelation that he has already given to us. That we are his and he is uh, in us. Let's walk in that revelation. The day is speaking now to that revelation. To that understanding. You're no longer more a child. When you was a child, you spoke like a child. You act like a child. You even understood as a child. But when you became a man or a woman full of light, you put away childish things. And that's what he said now in 1 Corinthians 13. God wants us to walk walk as children of light. We are, amen, the possessors of all good things. We are his ambassadors in the earth. Praise God. We are on a mission. We're taking the gospel of the kingdom to the four corners of the earth. And as we do that, we do that with the confidence. We don't even care. He said, don't even worry about what you're going to eat or drink. Some of you are so worried. Oh, I don't know. I need money. I don't know how we going, how I'm going on a mission and how I'm going on this mission with the light and with the, with the apostle and the prophet. And I don't have this. And I, why? are you taking thought about what you will eat in the Old Testament and the New Testament God instructed them he said when you go Praise God. Go into a city. Don't even worry about taking a purse or a script. But go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we are coming in today. And that's what we're going in. So be confident. Be full of faith. Pray for the light. Amen. There are those that are intercessors for the light. And of the light. And those of you. That, that's the last one I'm going to address today. Become an intercessor of the light. And for the light. Amen. In other words, cover your light carriers. Cover your apostle. Cover your prophet. Amen pray and cover us become an intercessor of the light and that is the oil right there the oil of prayer that keeps the light lit more than anything in the life of those who are the carriers and the embodiment of the light of jesus christ prayer is like oil it's like a it's like i mean it's like oil in a lantern praise god and as long as prayer is going on in in in, in our environment and around us as your apostle and your prophet you will see that our light and no matter if it look like it's flickering it's going to 
blaze right back up again because it's real good oil. Amen. It's proven oil. It never fails. I pray today, beloved, that this brief moment that I had to share with you, the fiery word of the Lord from the presence of the Most High God, that it encouraged you, that it inspired you. Praise God that you will become a man, either a keeper of the flame, a keeper of the light, a protector of the light. Praise God. Amen. A covering of the light. I pray that you will become that person today, that even as you're moving with Apostle and myself, praise God, as you're my partners, our partners, our sons and daughters, that you will not be someone that came to out the light, <laughs> but you came, praise God, to make sure that the light is lit and is blazing a flame that is so strong that the whole world can see Jesus on the inside of us. I pray that you'll be blessed today. Be strong and have a very, very good courage for the Lord our God is with you. This is yours truly, Prophetess Maddie Nottage. Praise God on behalf of my husband, Apostle Edison Nottage. I'm wishing you a blessed day. I'm wishing you a day in the Lord and declaring for you a day in the Lord that will not, not so soon be forgotten, but it will be, this word will be an eternal word burning like fire on the inside of you. So God bless you. And I hope to speak with you again real soon. God bless you. Love you.